Banner and I did a, a nice set of patterns. We, uh, it was a deeply enjoyable and satisfying experience to work uh, like brothers together, Richard and I. And the collaboration itself during that period of collaboration is, uh, was a dream. It's a, it was an ideal collaboration. I have great respect for this man's intelligence uh, and his <laughs> behavioral flexibility. He's willing to do damn near anything. Uh, we shared from the very beginning a sort of personal ethic that said, do anything other than be bored, do anything other than be repetitive. Now, I added to that a qualifier that says, within the ethical boundaries that I happen to carry. Um, and this starting point uh, offered us a excellent point of departure for the modeling of excellence, which we did, which established the field of neurolinguistic programming. Um, the new code was my attempt in the early 80s, early to mid 80s, to correct a couple of uh, flaws, in my opinion, in the classic code. Bandler and I, when applying what are now known as classic code formats, most of the books are, are examples of this or variations on those themes, um, we were explicit ourselves about reading the nonverbals and responding to the set of signals offered by the unconscious processes in our clients. If you look at the actual coding of the patterns, it does not make that adequately explicit, number one. Number two, uh, in Whispering in the Wind, a book uh, written a couple of years ago by Carmen Bostic St. Clair and myself, we discuss in detail this development of the new code. I looked around my, my environment in the early 80s and discovered there were a large number of very well-trained practitioners of neurolinguistic programming who were superb, could actually do powerful miracles and other, assisting other people to change health issues, behavioral issues, family issues, business issues. And they themselves were a horrific example of incongruency. That is, they had not done self-application. I consider access to the unconscious and self-application of any pattern prerequisites to call yourself anything in NLP. Without those, you're a very dangerous person. Um, I was disgusted, frankly, with this incongruency and set out to do two things, to correct the flaws such as the one I just mentioned in the classic code coding. In the behavior, we were impeccable. In the coding, we were not. And it just gave me an opportunity to correct that and reassign certain responsibilities. Those of you who still say, what would you rather do? What behavior would you prefer? What experience would you rather have in this context you've just identified in which you wish to make a change? Are assigning to precisely the part of the client least competence to make the decision, the decision to make the selection of behavior, resource, state, choice. That is the conscious mind. If you frame properly, consciously, using conscious verbal patterning, you can organize the unconscious to make a search with an intensive definition. I'll depend on you, Daryl, to go ahead and explain all that. An intensive definition to make a search and leave the unconscious free to make the selection of appropriate state. In fact, in the new code, we replace any historical references and any extraction of states of excellence from personal history. We replace all that because it has certain co contamination features. We replace that with what uh, we call uh, content-free games, which activate high-performance states through a very, very pretty design. Roger Tab is in large part responsible for. Uh, is the six-step six reframe one of those? No, the six-step reframing actually ought, is a historical bridge between the old and new code. Uh, in Whispering, there's a description of how that emerged, which was is sort of startling in itself. Um, and you can answer their question when they say, what is he talking about there, yourself, because you read the book. Uh, what the six-step reframing represents is an explicit involvement of the unconscious and an assignment to the unconscious of the responsibilities it's far more capable of exercising than the conscious mind. For example, the selection of the new behavior state or, or pattern that you wish to put in place of the thing you're not satisfied with. Um, and so in that sense, it represents a, a breakthrough which, whose natural consequence, it, from my personal point of view, is a development of something approaching uh, the new code. So the new code offered me, I, I had two 
intentions in mind in the design. One was correction of the flaws in the coding of the classic patterns uh, because a lot of people were getting in trouble because they didn't have the calibration skills and they didn't have the sensitivity of the nonverbal. They were just blind pilots running formats without any feedback. This is the blind pilot danger syndrome. Uh, the second intention I had in creating the new code was I wanted to see whether I could create a code which could not be presented by someone unless they themselves were congruent. I think I succeeded well with the first intention. I think I failed miserably with the second. There are lots of people running around teaching new code games that are wholly incongruent with the actual activity that they're presenting. 